Good evening, everybody. My name is Phil Hollingshead. I'm an Ag and Natural Resources Extension Educator for Central State University. Uh, we're out here in Hayfield in Gallia County, Ohio tonight, and I want to go over just basic plants you're going to find in your hayfield to give you a good general knowledge of what you may be looking for if you're going to start maybe possibly baling your own hay or going to buy hay to know what you're looking at. So to start out here, predominantly in southeastern Ohio due to poor soils and everything, we'll start out with fescue. That's pretty much everything you look, you throw, throw a rock anywhere, you're just going to land in a pile of fescue. Uh, it's got a very noticeable seed head to it. It's got that you'll notice normally it's a bright green plant. We're kind of later in the life cycle of this plant here. It's actually getting ready to go to seed. It's lost half of its seeds off of this side of the actual stem. Uh, it's got a coarser feel to it. And when you actually run your hand across the base of the leaves, when it's shorter as normal grass, you'll feel little spines and it'll prick your finger. Uh, nutritionally, fescue is not very good by itself. It's a lower nutrient plant. So if you're going to be baling hay, you're going to have to supplement some other grasses or legumes into the, into the mixture with this fescue to give your animals adequate nutrition. Uh, it has a fairly long life cycle, uh, so it is beneficial if you have some poor weather in the early spring to bale this, and it does dry down very well. And it does do well in poor soils, so here in southern Ohio where we have a large amount of red clay, it grows really well. The old saying is that you could throw fescue seed down on a rock and it would grow. So it's a good basis, it it's minimizes erosion, so it's a, it's a good basis for hay fields or pastures. Uh, next thing I want to talk about with you is going to be orchard grass. It's a more blue-green compared to your fescue, uh, the seed head is more of little clusters of seeds. Um, it has, a, most of the orchard grass in this area has already went back to seed. It has a short life cycle. So it's kind of hard to get good, in, good cuttings of hay with it later in the summer. Also being a cool season grass, it's gonna be, it's kind of struggling this time of year with it being hot and dry. It, it likes the early spring temperatures and normally you'll get a good stand of it in your first cutting of hay. But after that, if you mow it real short, it's gonna kill it off. Uh, it, nutritionally, it's very good. It's your livestock actually prefer this to fescue as far as palatability. Um, it's good on its own, but again, when paired with another uh, grass that's higher in nutrients or a legume, it, it's good. It's good, good at complementing those other plants. And then next, we'll go on to another cool season grass. This is Timothy grass. Uh, it's very different than the other two. It doesn't have separate individual seed pods. It's gonna grow more in a finger-like projection. It still has the same blue-green that you would have in orchard grass, but the big distinct difference is the seed pod, as well as if you move to the root, it's a bulb root, whereas uh, Timothy grass and, or orchard grass and fescue will be more of a fibrous root. So this is good nutritionally as well, and it's as palatable almost as orchard grass, but it's as good nutritionally as orchard grass, and it's a good complement to say your fescues, and if you add in a legume such as alfalfa or clover, it becomes really good in hay and in grazing. But it, along with orchard grass, Timothy does better in the cooler part earlier spring. Uh, you're not gonna see a ton of it in mid to late summer, once it starts heating up and drying out, this plant really doesn't perform that well, so it doesn't come back too well after your first cutting of hay. Most of your legumes here in southeastern Ohio, unless you plant them, like your alfalfa, uh, there was a good stand alfalfa on this particular farm that we're on currently uh, for a while. Um, before we get into talking about legumes and specific plants, a legume is in the pea family, actually. The fruit, if it had a fruit, would grow in a pod, but it has nodules on its roots that fix nitrogen into the soil. So uh, legumes are good for your soil and they help the other plant life grow a little bit better. So we, we've got two of the most common legumes here in southeastern Ohio. You've got your red clover 
and you got your white clover and the big distinct difference between the two i know it'll be hard to get a close-up on this but the red clover leaf will actually have a white v at the base and that's really the only distinct way without a flower to tell the difference between the two these are both really good nutritionally they're good for grazing um, red clover opposed to white clover red clover is actually very good at reseeding itself and it's actually a very adaptable plant whereas white clover is more uh, delicate and it's it's harder to reseed and doesn't really do well with adverse climates so once you get to your drier times of the year this is gonna gonna die off more and your red clover is gonna be more prominent so another major legume that I talked about earlier was alfalfa it falls in the same class as your clovers here it's really good and high in nutrients for your livestock it's not a very durable plant but it does, it does add good nutrition to your, to your pastures and to your hay. But by itself, it's too rich in nutrients for an animal. It can, adverse effect can be caused bloat in cattle and horses and goats and sheep. So it's good to mix your clover in with say fescue, orchard grass and timothy grass like we're standing in here. And it will make a good quality hay that meets the total nutrient require, requirements for your animals. And that's a good basis of plant life that you're going to find in pastures and hay fields here in southeastern Ohio. For more information about any of these plants that I've covered today and fact sheets and other resources, visit our Central State Extension website or get in touch with us.